to episode I have no idea what number of the Watch Hour Made podcast. Uh, welcome back if you are a returning viewer and a big hello if this is the very first time you're joining me. I, it's the second last day of the year when I'm recording this and it's been a very busy year and I think everyone's had a pretty busy year uh, as far as I can tell. Um, a lot of crafting has gone on and that's always a good thing I think. Uh, I've got a few things to show you. I've got um, an FO and a couple of whips and I've even got a design whip to show you. So I might just um, dive right in I think. <laughs> um, I'll show you an FO first so that I can show you one of my whips that goes along with it. So in the last episode I showed you the very beginning of my advent pattern and it was just a little i-cord there was nothing to it so you wouldn't have been able to get any idea of what it was going to look like but by now most of you would have seen what that advent pattern looks like if you follow me on um, Instagram um, because I released it not long after I released the last podcast episode um, and that pattern's been a great success so thank you to everybody who um, has made that pattern so far that's been so lovely and it's been amazing to see um, everyone's different versions coming up on Instagram and Ravelry that's been wonderful that's been so fantastic I've loved watching all the different colors and styles come together that's been amazing um, just hang on one second, my lights have just decided to move. <laughs> I think I fixed them. <laughs> so I'll show you the FO first. And this is the Vega wrap. And I have to remember that I can't actually see all of what you can see in the screen here. So I don't know how much you can actually see on the screen right now, but it's a very long wrap and you can see it's got lots of big <laughs> holes in it. I can see straight through to the screen here. Um, so lots of open lace, but very open lace. So these holes are huge. You can really fit your fingers through them. Um, Very big. So lots of different textures happening there because I just used um, scraps from my stash. Um, it was designed with yarn advent calendars in mind, but just like I've done here, you can use scraps from your stash and they don't have to be in colour sequence like this. You could just literally use random scraps from your stash, of course. Um, but you don't have to do that either. The pattern actually looks really beautiful in a solid colour as well. Um, or just three different colours or even two different colours. Whatever you want. You could use um, whole skeins. You don't have to use scraps. Uh, you could do big solid blocks in rows. You'll see with the next one that I've done something a little bit different. Um, and I'll show you that next one. So the next one I have actually used 
an advent calendar. Um, so I actually got two yarn advent calendars this year. Um, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> so uh, this one that I'm about to show you, sorry I keep reaching off screen. Um, I don't have my usual table next to me, so um, I do have to reach a long way to get everything. <laughs> Um, so this one I'm using the Flourish Fibres um, Advent Calendar which is a botanical dyed um, fingering weight advent calendar and it's beautiful, oh my goodness, it's so pretty. <laughs> um, and so that's how this one is going so far. You will notice even though it's well past advent. <laughs> I'm not finished. I'm only up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm only up to day nine on my advent calendar. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely not up to date with my advent calendar, but that doesn't matter. Um, so, you can see there what's going on. So, it suddenly got really dark outside. You remember the last episode that I filmed in this same position and there was a huge storm going on outside my window? Well, the same thing is happening now. There's a storm brewing outside. I know. <laughs> it's just gotten really dark. But hopefully you can still see what's going on. Um, so, it's actually sort of similar colours to my last one, but these are a little bit different. You get better idea if I lean out here against the window maybe. Um, so something different and rather than change colour every single repeat I've done two repeats per colour on this one and um, I'm enjoying that with the big blocks of colour there. That's really really fun. Really enjoying that. And that's sort of been my go-to um, knitting uh, sort of through December. But I did a huge project in December, which is why I didn't quite keep up to date with my advent knitting through December. Um, it was no problem at all to do two repeats per colour per day of this pattern, especially because I know it off by heart because it's mine obviously but um, each I just didn't have time <laughs> because I was doing something else so that is the Vega wrap that um, I have been doing and I will um, keep working on that because I'm really loving it um, and I haven't been opening the I didn't open the calendar every single day either it's still a surprise to me so <laughs> um, I'll be probably doing some Advent surprise knitting in January. Um, and the thing that I was knitting on in December, well actually not knitting, crocheting in December, was, I may have mentioned it in the last podcast, I decided to make my sister a blanket for Christmas. And I did start it in plenty of time. Um, but then it sort of accidentally went into hibernation. I'm not really sure what happened. Anyway, um, <laughs> I had this plan that I would do, it was made up of motifs and I had this plan that if I did one motif a day, which was very reasonable, um, I would get it finished with three weeks to put it together and then a week to do the border and then a week to block it and everything would be fine. And this was my timeline of how I planned it out so that it would be really easy and wouldn't be stressful. And then somehow I started it and then, I don't know, got a bit overconfident or I don't know. Anyway, with three weeks to go before Christmas, I realized I, I really hadn't done anything at all and I still had 50 motifs to go out of 56 motifs that were in the blanket and I hadn't put it together 
and I hadn't put a border on it and I hadn't blocked it and I started to panic and uh, oh my god um so I ended up having to sort of spend every available crafting moment on this blanket um and I can't show you the blanket because obviously I gave it to my sister for Christmas because I did get it finished um the day before Christmas Eve actually I got it fully finished um thank goodness <laughs> Um, but I did take quite a few photos, so I'll slot some in here. Uh, and that blanket is the heirloom throw, I think it's called, let me check, uh, from Shelley Husband, from the Granny Square Flare book. And I'll show you the pattern, maybe. It's in this book. Here, heirloom sampler blanket. So it's sort of the one that's on the back cover, but it's also this one here. So they show it. I don't think I'm giving anything away by showing that. Um, so that's sort of it there. Um, and you make... So this book here has... I could probably show you the thing. has 50 different um, granny squares in it, or crocheted squares. And uh, for, to make that blanket, you make one of each motif and then six extras of your favourite squares. Uh, and then you put them all together in a random fashion and, uh, and then do a border. And there's your blanket. Um, and some of the motifs, let me see if I can show you some without giving anything away. Some are very... simple like that and some are more elaborate like how can I do this like that <laughs> um, so it was a great variation of all different types of granny squares you can see quite a lot of them on the front there um, and it was a really great um, way to practice all different types of crochet and uh, the author of this book Shelley has got some amazing techniques some of which I hadn't tried before um, they were new to me and that was awesome to discover some new techniques and they were really good uh, excellent techniques for finishing and um, making beautiful neat um, squares and uh, joining rounds and things like that that were really fantastic so I really really enjoyed it even though at certain points I was having like little um, crafty nervous breakdowns thinking oh my god I'm never gonna get this done and then you know a few hours later I'd be thinking yeah, I'm fine I'm gonna get this done early and then two hours later I'd be like I'm never gonna get this done so you know um, but I got it done in plenty of time and it was really beautiful so um, I used uh, put it over here. That's pretty accurate, that colour. Uh, I think it's called Storm Cloud. And it's Bendigo Warm Mills Cotton in the DK weight. And that was really nice to use. It was really good. Uh, I don't know how much I used. I didn't weigh the blanket. I should have, but I didn't. I either used four and a half or maybe five. Balls? I don't know. Um, maybe I used four balls and this was the leftover from the fifth ball. I'm not sure. I have no idea actually. Um, I wasn't counting because I was just banging out the squares as quick as I could 
Um, some days I was doing two squares a day, other days I was doing 15 squares a day. So um, yeah, I was banging them out. Uh, but it was it was good. I, I really enjoyed every single square actually. Um, I actually had a hard time trying to decide which six squares I would do as the extra squares because I thoroughly enjoyed every single square. There was no square that I thought I'll never do that again. Um, they were all fantastic. Um, I really loved it. So uh, that is a great book if you're looking for uh, some interesting granny squares to make. I highly recommend this book. And I believe now it's available in a digital only version as well. So um, that's really cool too. So get on to that. Uh, Granny Square Flare by Shelley Husband. Now, um, my next piece is, um, I also had a test knit running as well for a little while in December, or since I last spoke to you. And my test, or oh, test crochet actually, it wasn't a test knit. And that went really well. And my test crochets were awesome as usual. And my cushion is rubbing on my chair and it's making a bit of awkward noise. <laughs> um, I swear it's the chair. Um, for the Altair shawl. And I don't know if it had a name last time I showed you, but that is this shawl here. And it is, the test is all done and finished and everyone did a beautiful job. Um, and this pattern will be released in the new year. So if this was one you were looking forward to making, you'll be able to make it um, in the new year. So right at the start of January, this one should be coming out because everything's ready to go. So thanks very much to all my amazing test crochets. They were all fantastic. Everyone did a beautiful job. I'm about to <clears throat> choke on some fluff. Hold on a moment. And the other thing I was doing in December was um, I had another advent calendar. I mentioned earlier I had two. Um, and the other one I had was from the Rosie Byland Etsy shop. So from lovely Hannah, who also has the Rosie Byland podcast. Hello, Hannah. Um, and I had decided I was going to make the um, Amber O'Brien, I can't remember the name of the pattern now, her most recent um, advent calendar pattern. She had a big cowl for that and um, it's really popular. And I started that, <laughs> well, I had a few false starts actually, um, but I eventually got going with it. Um, and then a revised version of the pattern got sent out about two hours after I started. <laughs> so then I had to start it again. <laughs> um, and then another revised version got sent out, so then I had to start it again. <laughs> And I started to get really confused and I didn't know what version it was meant to be using. Um, and I just thought, I'll just leave it and keep going. It probably doesn't even matter. Right at the start, it probably doesn't matter. Um, it turned out it did matter. <laughs> um, so I had to start it again. Um, and it was no big deal. I mean, I wasn't that far into it. Um, so I started it again. And... I got going and it was it was going all right, but it was so much knitting and it was really slow going. Um, and I thought, oh, it's probably just because that was the first section that it took me so long. Right, so the next day I did the next section and it took me forever. I was thought, oh my God, I am never going to get this stuff. There's no way I can keep up with this all throughout December, especially when I'm trying to make that blanket as well. Um, and it's not an intuitive pattern at all. Well, I didn't find it intuitive. And I, even if you can remember the bits in the middle, um, the beginning and end of every single row are completely different. And there was no way to guess it or memorize it or look at your work and figure it out. They were all completely different. And I was, so yeah, I had to look at the pattern constantly 
and I was starting to get really um not frustrated but I wasn't enjoying it it wasn't a relaxing knit at all um, because it was it was very taxing and it was taking hours like five or six hours to do a section and I didn't have five or six hours um, per day to knit in December every day <laughs> I wish I did but I don't um, so I did the next day um, but it took me three days to do that next section so by that stage I was already three days behind and then I managed to get the fourth section done but by this stage it was already halfway through December and then I gave in <laughs> I gave up I stopped doing it I wasn't enjoying it and it was it was kind of a bit I don't know I wasn't enjoying it and I wasn't loving the way I wasn't loving the pattern enough to put in that much time um, and put my advent calendar into it because I really loved the advent calendar and I wanted the advent calendar to be made into something that I was 100% in love with. So about three days ago, I think, I unraveled it, <laughs> but I think I've got some pictures of it, so I'll show you what it looked like before. Um, but I unraveled it. And now I'm seeing pictures of a few people who've managed to finish it. I don't know how they've done that. They must literally, they must be people who are retired, I think. Um, otherwise, I just don't know how you could possibly finish it in this time. But anyway, good for them because they must be knitting machines. <laughs> um, and they look absolutely magnificent. They are so beautiful. Um, so I think it'll be something that I might knit in the future because it's really, really beautiful. Um, the finished piece is just gorgeous, but I might knit it with something different and when I'm not under pressure and then I think I'll really enjoy it and um, I'll really, really enjoy the finished piece because it's just gorgeous. Um, so um, anyway, I unraveled mine, <laughs> uh, which was disappointing because I spent so many hours working on this thing even though I only had four sections like it was a lot of hours of knitting um, and I sort of felt a bit felt a bit dumb because it had taken me so long to knit this really small piece of knitting and I couldn't like memorize the pattern and normally I can just like memorize stuff and figure stuff out really quickly and I don't know if it was an extra complicated pattern or if I was just had too much other thing too many other things going on I don't know but anyway um I did it and I started something else and I'd had a few ideas sort of going on in my head but I had one idea that had been going around and around for a while and I thought I think that might actually work and I had done some calculations and figured that I had kind of the exact amount of yarn and it would work really well with the colours that I had for the advent calendar and they would interact really well. So I'll show you what I've got so far and I think it's working. I'm going to keep going anyway but because I'm really really enjoying this one. Um, and I'm not under pressure now, so that's probably why I'm enjoying it. So, it is a mosaic piece. No idea of a name yet. But, uh, you get the idea. Let me see what's happening here. So there's a little bit of an ombre thing happening, but... Also not, because I don't know what the colours are going to do. I haven't opened the rest of the um, advent calendar. I only opened this blue colour today. I didn't keep opening the, the days each day. I stopped when I stopped knitting. 
if it makes sense. Um, but you can see what's happening. Um, so I'm going to the Rosie Byland Advent Calendar. You could get twelve days of Christmas or twenty four days of Christmas, and the twelve days of Christmas came in with two options. You could get warm or cool. Um, and if you got the 24 days, you got both the warm and the cool. So I got the, t the 24 day option and I'm going to use all the warm colours as the main, which you can see is doing this action here and these patterns here. And then I'll use all the cool colours as the background. So that's what's going to happen. Oh. So hopefully that's making sense. It's actually a little more contrasting in real life, but the lighting that I've got here, which is dull because there's about to be a storm, um, is not really doing it justice. I don't know if that's really showing up. Anyway, you can see it a bit more in real life. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. And it's a much quicker knit. So in two days now, it actually kind of looks like a beach towel. Now that I'm looking at it, like a beach towel from the 80s. Um, which I'm cool with, I love towels. Um, fun fact there, Shara loves towels. Um, and um, I actually bought myself a towel in the Boxing Day sales. So yeah, one of the only things I did buy uh, in the Boxing Day sales, bought myself a towel. Um, a beach towel. Um, uh, anyway, I lost my train of thought because I was thinking about how much I love towels. Um, so in the last two days, I've knit five days, five colours, five ad advent days worth. Um, so that was much easier than taking 13 days to knit four days worth in the other advent cal calendar pattern. Um, so yeah, that made me feel a little bit better. <laughs> um, but, you know. Um, like I said, I'm not under pressure now, so um, that did make it a bit easier. Um, and I'm sure that the other pattern I will really enjoy making again in the future. Um, so the next colour that's going to come in and be the main colour, so not a background colour, but the next warm colour, is about to be introduced and that will be this colour in next so I'm really excited to start that one um, so yeah loving it absolutely loving it really really loving it very pleased with that so I'm sort of doing it making it up as I go along but I'm pretty sure it's just gonna be a big long rectangle I think I did have a like, maybe a vision of making it do a bit of a V but I think I'm just going to have it a big long rectangle. I don't know. I'll see how I feel as I go along. Um, I figure I get to the halfway point and then think about whether it's going to change direction. I don't know. I'll see. But along with that advent calendar came a full skein. Um, this is what it looks like. That's a uh, true colour of what it really looks like. And here it is up close. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. I love it. And that's from Rosie Byland. And this colour is called The Year Rudolph Got Tangled in the Christmas Lights. I love that so much. I love that. It's so beautiful. I would actually really like a sweater, a whole sweater in that. And because Hannah is awesome, she put a little extra gift in mine. And this is called Fairy Friends, this group of minis. How beautiful is that? Oh my god. So, so pretty. 
gorgeous are those? They are just so beautiful. And I don't know if I'll add those in to my wrap or if I might save these for something special on their own. Hmm. They actually go really beautifully with this. So maybe they'll end up going into something together. Maybe. Hmm. Um, so I think that's all the crafty bits and pieces I've got to show you. Um, but the other thing that I did since I last saw you was I think when I recorded I was just about to head off to Bendigo to the um, Blues and Roots Music Festival and I did that and it was really fantastic. I had a fantastic time. It was so great. Loved every minute of it. Um, that was brilliant. Weather was fantastic. Um, everything was great. I ate heaps of really great food. Uh, listened to heaps of awesome music, made some great friends. It was really cool. Um, awesome. Love it. Uh, I'll be going again next year, I think. And then also in December, when I was doing all my mad crafting, uh, it was my birthday. And I went away for my birthday as well. And guess where I went? Bendigo. Can't keep me away from the place. Um, so... I went there with some friends, uh, one of my friends who I went with, his parents live in Bendigo, so um, we all went up there and um, the weather was absolutely mental, like completely bonkers, like it is every year on my birthday. Last year my birthday got completely rained out we'd organized to go to an outdoor concert and um there was like a massive flood and the place where the concert was was like a lake because it was a park and it was underwater and we would have had to like canoe in so that was fun this year same thing um the weather was crazy uh, luckily by the time i got to bendigo the weather had gone a past through Bendigo they did have the wettest December day in like I don't know since 1911 or something the day I arrived but when I got there it had kind of already passed and everything was like all leaking and flooded and you know no electricity and everything but you know that's always the adventure um but then my friends who were coming up on the train um got delayed and I had to go and have dinner by myself in a restaurant and it was weird <laughs> and they're texting me and you know we're still in Melbourne and everything um because no trains were running and all that sort of fun stuff but you know that's all part of the adventure of living in Melbourne with crazy weather um but then the weather was magnificent after that so I didn't care um and we went out uh, for uh, drinks on the first night and then we went and sat in the park and watched a meteor shower and it was really cool um, uh, and it was awesome and one of my friends that was with me um, had never seen a shooting star before so that was really exciting that he got to see his first shooting star or meteor um, with us for my birthday so that was really good um, I see shooting stars all the time because where I live there's very little light pollution so um, I have the good fortune of seeing shooting stars and meteors and whatnot a lot. Um, so that was exciting and um, then the next day we went to uh, Frida Kahlo exhibition and see some other amazing art and then we ate ourselves silly. Um, I literally ate so much food I thought my dress might split. It was a bit awkward. Um, but it didn't. <laughs> and um, then the next day we did some more touring around, went and looked at antiques and stuff and other lovely things. Went for a few walks and did more eating. 
and then um, uh, yeah, it was really good. It was beautiful. I had an absolutely fantastic weekend. It was really, really great. Uh, so that was what I did for my birthday, and then um, Christmas came around, and we had a lovely Christmas, lots of seafood, and um, well, my dad is addicted to oysters, so we had an actual mountain of oysters. Um, it was really, really hot. <laughs> So um, that was good. My sister's chihuahua caught a massive blue tongue lizard in the backyard, which caused a bit of drama. Um, but we managed to rescue everyone and everyone was safe, including the lizard. Um, and now we've renamed the chihuahua lizard loops. And uh, all the kids had a lovely time. And about it. We've had a massive heat wave and now it's not boiling for the first time in about a week and a half. Thank goodness, which is really nice. Um, so I'm getting a bit more knitting done because it's not all sweaty and gross to do knitting. <laughs> um, but that's probably about it. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think I've caught you up on everything I've been doing. <laughs> Uh, but I do have a prize winner to announce. This is the November um, year-long stash busting craft along prize winner to announce. So if you can see your name here, congratulations, you are the November pattern winner. And uh, you can contact me via Ravelry and let me know the name of any individual pattern on Ravelry that you would like as your prize and I will send that to you via Ravelry. Congratulations. And if... Uh, I'm not going to announce the December winner now. I will do that in the next episode because I want to do a big one where that I usually do where you get three patterns and that will be the whole year. Um, so not just for December, but for the whole year. Um, and I, because it's not quite the end of the year, and I like to give people a couple of days grace into the new year to add their patterns in before I close that thread, or their finished objects in before I close that thread. Um, and then I will announce that winner in the next episode, and that will be a big prize of three patterns. Um, and you can choose to either keep all those three patterns treat yourself or you could spread those patterns around keep one for yourself and spread the others to some friends or do whatever you like um but i won't judge if you want to keep them all for yourself like you've worked hard all year with all those fo's literally like, treat yourself um but that will be in the next episode and uh one more thing if you uh watch Hannah's podcast, the Rose Hip Island podcast, or Rose Hip Knits podcast. Uh, you may have already heard about this, or you may have already seen it on Instagram as well. I'm just going to check what it's actually called, but I don't want to give you the wrong name. Uh, let's just see if my internet will break. Oh, that's the other fun thing. Over Christmas, we had no internet, um, which was just great because all the things I wanted to cook. Um, but the recipes were online and of course I hadn't saved them anywhere else uh, because I thought I'd just be able to access them online no <laughs> so I had to get my sister to literally type text messages with um, recipes she had to look up the recipes online and then type text messages to me it was quite frustrating um, so, but we have the internet now, it's like living in the future. Where would the information be? Hmm. <laughs> Why would the information be so close? No, of course it wouldn't. I think it's called... Just chat amongst yourselves while I look this up. <laughs> uh, here we go. It is cold. Right. I've got my glasses.
sunglasses on, so I'm going to have to do this. It is called the Aussie Dyer Sockalong. Right. Um, and the hashtag on Instagram is 2019 Aussie Dyer Along. So I'll put that here. Um, and you'll find all the information in the Rose Hip Island or Rose Hip Knits uh, Ravelry group, but it's actually the brainchild of Margaret E.V. or Margaret F. I'm not sure how you'd like to pronounce your Instagram name. Um, but Hannah's helping out with that um, make along and it's going to run all throughout 2019. Uh, and uh, Go and check out Hannah's Ravelry group to see all the information about it. But I'm donating a few prizes for that, pattern prizes and maybe something else. Um, and I'm going to join in with that make-along because I think it's a great idea. So um, it's a make-along where you use Aussie dyed yarn. Um, and I think you can use New Zealand dyed yarn as well. Uh, so there's a grand prize if you manage to make something from a dyer from each state and territory in Australia. Uh, so that sounds like a good challenge to me. I can't wait to do that and I hope I can do it. Um, I'm going to set myself that goal. And um, the, of course my year-long stash busting craft along will be running again next year 2019 that won't stop and uh, I think that's everything now so uh, I can't wait to chat to you all again soon and um, thanks for joining me right bye